G'day, today we're doing a Brico on a cast iron power glide in a 57 Chev Bel Air. It's got the V8 motor in it. Um, this one's all original, so it's quite a beautiful car. Um, now these have the cast iron power glide two speed in them. And there's a few different ways to identify it. Um, the best way is this number here, the, the bottom one stamped on the bottom of the transmission. D2, D206. Now the first letter is basically the month, which is A, B, C, D. So it's the fourth month, which is April. The next two numbers are the day, the 20th. And the last one is uh, the year, which is 1956. So DT06 is the fourth month, April, 20th of April, 1956. And that's how we identify which transmission. I believe in through the 50s they had four different types, um, which are all slightly different to one another. Now this one isn't starting in neutral. Um, we found that the linkages are a bit sloppy there. You can see how sloppy it is over here. We can either put a uh, make up a bronze bush there, drill this bracket out, put a bronze bush in there. That'll take up a lot of that slop. The other place where it's a little bit sloppy is over here. You can see the... So we're just going to repair the linkages. Um, this one's also got a shutter. A shutter and um, a vibration in it. Um, also there's a few little oil leaks. These naturally always weep a bit of oil here and there. Um, so hopefully a kid will fix that. Um, a little bit of slop in the in the bush here in the extension housing as well and there's a leak over here I've just wiped it off a bit but there was a, a trail of oil running right along the diff so he'll want that fixed as well anyway we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and uh, do do a Rico on it If you're doing a uh, transmission service on this, um, they, I'd recommend putting a magnet on the on the magnetic plug there, on the drain plug, and there's also band adjustment. Okay, we've just taken the transmission out, and there she is, heavy hoofer. Okay, we're going to take the uh, side cover off. This is the one that's on the bell housing. That one's actually got the filter in it uh, for the, the pickup from the pump. So there we go. You can see the, the filter in, in there. Next we're going to take off the low and reverse servos and uh, that's also got the pressure regulator in it. This is on the driver's side here in Australia, so uh, on the right hand side of the transmission. I've just popped it off and you can see the band adjustment there and the regulator valve and spring. Just be careful when you're popping this off because it has got this large spring in it and that whole cover will pop off at you. Um, so just take a little bit of care. Now there's a the cover there. Um, this little valve in here, there's 
couple of little springs under it. Um, I believe that spring is the pressure regulator, um, or that valve is, the pressure regulator boost valve. So just be careful because that, that one's actually stuck, but the spring will actually push it out. Sometimes it'll pop right out. Well, I've got to put the camera down and just get it out. Stuck on the gasket there. But you can see what it looks like. Just it's got the larger and smaller spring. Smaller spring goes inside the other one. There we go. There's nothing else in there. So just just be careful you don't that doesn't pop out sometimes if you're working on the ground or whatever things can go missing quite easily part of it um, that regulator valve just sits on here and these servos here sometimes if you just tap them they'll I'll just pop out. Um, I've got to do it again. <laughs> I've got to put the camera down to get them out. Now I've just stood it up on its end. I'm just going to remove all these linkages to get it out of the way. Um, and then we can take the, the bell housing off and uh, continue with it. Um, we'll also pull off the, uh, the governor housing. There's a governor valve in there and the extension housing. little space of the goes on the selector linkage. And there we've got the governor and that just slides out. You can see it's uh, as it spins around these little weights just fling out to the sides um, the actual valves in here in that part there. So you can see it moving as those weights come out. Just check that gear that it's okay. Um, this one's got quite a few chips off it, so might need to replace that as well. Okay, we've just taken the extension housing off. Uh, now we're going to take the bell housing off, and uh, it's a little bit, bit of a tricky thing because it's so heavy. Um, ideally if you've got some sort of little block or support to just uh, rest it on while you're pulling that out uh, it can be handy to, to do. I'm going to get a block and just rest it over here uh, where the servo cover is and um, just rest it on there. Just be careful not to damage any of the surfaces it'll, it'll leak later on. Now I've just put it on a block of wood here like you can see. Um, now I can pull the bell housing off, um, take the, the valve cover off and take the guts out. Um, it's balanced pretty well when it sits on that um, servo housing so when I get this weight uh, off the bell housing off it'll sit even better. Okay just going to pop off this, you can see the valve, valve body in there and the kick down linkage. There we go, we've got the valve body there and, and the pump underneath and there's the inside. Okay, I've pulled out the the high-low clutch and band, the band's there and the one inside. Okay, now we've got the planetary there and it's got the reverse band.
using a slide hammer um, we've just taken off the uh, speedo the drive gear one on the extension housing is the driven gear a little bit hard to see but I've just taken that circlip off there you can see that with circlip pliers there we go now that flange there that holds the bearing in, that needs to be removed. The way I do it, I just stick a Phillips screwdriver in the bottom end there and just put some pressure on it and it'll just pop out. There we go. That, that's holding the bearing in place. Now we just put the slide hammer in that little slot there and pull that bearing out. So I'll just do that now. There we go, we've pulled the bearing out with the slide hammer and there's a circlip in there that's just holding that output shaft. You can see there's a little... There we go. We've just uh, put the slide hammer in that groove there and, um, you know, just rotated it and slid it out slowly. And there's the circlip in there, if you can see that, that's holding the output shaft in. You can see there's a bit of slop there as well, so we'll just have to check that out as so just slide that out yeah put shaft that's a planetary got a little shim there there's that and we can pull out that drum that band looks like it's okay as well now that just over here that slop that we we're talking about there's a bush in the case here and the other side's like a guide a pump so just tap tap after you've undone the bolts on the rear end just tap it off with a a soft uh, punch and there's the rear pump there we go. Now when you're removing the uh, the output shaft, there's a little pin there on the on the shaft and that has to actually al align up with that groove there if you can see that. Can't get the right angle of it. But there's a little there's a little groove there in the side of it. When that's aligned, you'll be able to slide it out properly. Um, a lot of people just get a hammer, think that it's there's a little bit of movement there, and they end up destroying that little pin. And that pin actually drives the rear pump. Okay, we've got, got it all apart now. Uh, there's a few bits and pieces we need. In the Fatsco kit, uh, we only got the... Uh, the converter uh, neck uh, bush which is the one that's in the pump and the extension housing bush um, we need the case bush which is in here we've measured it and there's probably about 10 10 thou, uh, play in there which is too much if it was around five or less um, it would be okay um, another thing we found that on the where are we On the high load drum, uh, we've got some hot spots on it. Um, they need to be sort of mush um, with a stone, just take those hard spots down and then just polish it up on the lathe. Um, the band looks okay, but um, that's what's been causing these hot spots on that. Um, the reverse band, which is this one. I don't know if you can see that in that light, but uh, the tips are completely worn off. So we need a reverse band. Uh, we also need, um, on that reverse hub, we need the bush that's in there. Um, it's pretty worn. You can see the, uh, the governor 
uh, the plastic gear on the governor, um, the teeth are chewed out on it. That would have been caused because of the uh, the bushes are worn. Um, the drives on the output shaft um, that drives that gear. So by the output shaft slopping around, it'll chew out that plastic gear quite easily. So we'll have to get a kit for that. Um, you can get a, a governor repair kit that includes that that gear. On the rear pump, just uh, be careful not to, to lose that little pin there that just sits in in that hole there. Um, and you can see the rear pump there. It doesn't look too bad. I've, I've had it out and, and had a look. There's no real rough marks on there. We'll just put a really fine stone over that just to take any any burrs or sharp edges off. And there's the kit that uh, they come with. Uh, basically got a ring kit, extension housing seal, front pump seal. You got the extension housing bush, which goes over there. You got your front pump bush, which is that one. Your steel clutch plates and your friction cup clutch plates and your gasket and seal kit um, all the other bits and pieces you've got oh, we've got to chase it up I haven't pulled the uh, torque converter apart either yet um, or the front part of the transmission we'll do that shortly collector there there's also a little metal clad seal so um, when you're getting that out a lot of people try and pry it out with a screwdriver there is a special tool that um, you basically screw into there and then just use a slide hammer to get it out either that or uh, you may even be able to knock it out from the inside but we need to take that um, selector linkage off it's got that strong spring holding it there so just be careful when you're pulling that apart as well to replace that um, that seal is you've got to pull the transmission out um, in most cases to to replace it but um, there is a tool that can slide over that and it actually you just screw it in and then just use the leverage there's a little uh, bolt that goes on um, that you just bolt it up and it'll pull that seal out that's a tool that we've got um, basically you just screw that on there it's tapered with a coarse thread just till it go, bites into the metal part and then you do this up and it'll just pull that um, seal out um, almost impossible to get it out with a screwdriver without uh, damaging it while it's in the vehicle this is off the, uh, the valve body and the front pump there pump and valve body was stuck on pretty hard so what I've done is I've actually I pushed this valve in all the way where it's not actually going to travel and just use that as a levering point just be careful not to damage anything another point that I used was just under here where there's there's no gasket and just gently go either side until it comes loose anyway the, see the the pump in there and we'll just take the valve body off there I'll just put it over there it's got a bit of oil in it one other bit that we're going to replace on this is the the little drive pin uh, for the rear pump you can see the head I don't know if you can see it there the camera won't focus properly but um, the head's a little bit worn on it um, and that's what actually drives drives that gear in that little slot so if you see the the size of the head is actually a bit worn out um, and they're only about uh, 300 thou um, long 300 three, 300 thousandths of an inch And that's basically uh, what's needed to recondition this unit. Just a matter of uh, cleaning it all up. 
going through the valve body making sure everything's nice and clean um, replace all the rings bushes seals and it's not a very difficult um, transmission to recondition if you can get all the parts um, the, the reverse band is a little bit hard to get and I believe that the the double wrap uh, the front band um, is the same as in the aluminium um, power glides anyway now these transmissions um, notorious for, for getting leaks here and there so it's what I do is I just run a stone just nice and flat over all the mating surfaces um, it just makes it nice and flat you can see on this one um, where the stone's been rubbing it's, it's that lighter silver so um, it just means that the out, outer side was a little bit higher than the inner side um, it'll just make the gasket sit a lot a lot more flush on there and um, hopefully eliminate all the leaks and we'll do the same over here and wherever wherever the uh, gaskets are Now I'm just going to clean all that old gasket off and just careful to not um, damage that that edge there um, just do it as flat as you can and just slowly and then we'll run the stone over that just to level it all up there it is I've just gone over with the stone um, what actually happens is these bolt holes um, if they don't have a chamfer on them um, when you do the bolt up it'll actually pull a little bit of that edge out um, that'll be higher or raised some of the bolt holes have like a, a chamfer on it so um, they it doesn't seem to do it on those sort of holes but on like that one there um, where the the threads tapped in right up to the edge it'll actually pull that edge out but you can see where those white marks are that they were all higher spots um, when I ran the stone over just makes it a, a little bit um, of a better a flatter surface for the gasket to be bolted down to and just increases the, the sealing capacity of the gasket and there's the front half of the, the case there you can see the white marks again where it um, where the stones actually rubbed it off a bit more um, that just says that that point was actually raised a little bit higher and it's actually on this one it's all the way around I'll do the same on the other surface um, and it'll just it'll just allow the gasket to um, to seal a little bit flatter and better the the, um, the gaskets actually um, when you think about it, it's only sealing that much because it's the oil comes from the middle so any gasket around the outside doesn't really matter if it's raised on the outside then that inside part of the gasket's not going to be pressed up hard enough and that's what will eventually cause the uh, leak hope that makes sense also just check these servo bores that there's no lip on there where the rings run um, you can just lightly run a hone like an engine uh, cylinder hone through it um, or uh, in this case they're perfect there's no lip or anything in there so we'll just basically clean this one up and uh, give the case a good clean up I can knock out that uh, the bush um, are waiting for the new one to arrive uh, replace the the selector shaft seal and that one's ready to be slowly put back together on the case you can actually see these little pressure ports as well um, just measuring the the rear servo pressure uh, the front servo pressure or the front band and the rear band um, you know, I see there's another one over here um, 
I'm not sure what that one is but it may be the the line pressure or the pump pressure and that's basically it um, there'll be another one on the other case as well but it just shows how on these it's quite easy to see where the uh, the oil flow will be through on the more modern transmission it's very hard to to see because they uh, yeah they bore it out and plug up holes and and channels I don't know if you can see that but uh, here's an old tag that uh, was reconditioned at some stage BAP automatic transmission exchange serial numbers 8338 it says it's pre-tested guaranteed manufactured by an independent rebuilder basically how uh, we've done the strip and analysis of uh, what parts we need for a cast iron power glide um, I'm intending on making a uh, reconditioning video so keep an eye out for that one as well um, on the same unit um, it's just that this video is getting a little bit long so I'm going to do it in two parts hopefully okay I hope that's helped um, in giving you a bit of confidence in possibly reconditioning one of these transmissions yourself uh, thank you for watching